All right, um, so I'm being joined by Professor Alex German today um, to discuss feline obesity, um, which is quite a big problem um, in cats, especially as they get a little bit older. Um, so we've obviously been hearing a lot in the news recently, Alex, about uh, obesity in people um, and what we need to do to try and lower our risk of, of potentially getting um, the coronavirus. Do you think that, that potentially the lockdown is going to have had a little bit of effect on, on the increase in, in feline obesity as well? Do you think us being at home has affected our cats? Uh, it's a great question. Um, uh, if I can be the honest as I can be, we really don't know if I'm being totally honest. Um, yeah. Certainly, there have been suggestions that the lockdown might have influenced people's weight, and a lot of people talk about the, the weight they might have gained during lockdown. In reality, actually, from a, a scientific point of view, there's actually not a huge amount of evidence for that, interestingly. Yeah. Um, so there may be, for some people, that has been a problem. Other people have actually used that as an opportunity to become more active in various ways. So I think on balance, for people, we do, you know, it's, it's, an you know, it's been an interesting, I guess, experiment, uh, human experiment. Um, from a cat point of view, uh, to my knowledge, nobody has yet studied the effect um, lockdown might have had. Um, I would hazard that it probably has less of an effect on cats than it might on dogs, mm -hmm. uh, because of course cats kind of do their own thing a lot of the times anyway. Um, you know, they, they tend to rule the roost, they do what they want, and I'm not sure anybody would have locked them down as much as locked people down. Um, I don't think and, and it, it's a good thing actually in some respects um uh, people are less inclined to treat cats than they are dogs um mm -hmm. so yes they do give food rewards but less so i actually think probably cats may be more protected than perhaps dogs would be and even people might be yeah no i think that makes sense i i do have to say i've been a little bit worried that i've possibly been filling up the food bowl a lot more frequently than would happen when i've been out of the house um so it may not be the case in my house but we'll see we'll see what happens there yeah. is definitely some weighing of the cats that needs to be done in the next few weeks i'm afraid um and really in terms of feline obesity why why is it an issue what is it is it a major health issue in cats what what sort of things do you see related to obesity yeah, so obesity is and has been for a while a, a major health issue, but sadly the problem is getting worse. Um, mm -hmm. uh, studies over the years have suggested that steadily a greater proportion of, of pet cats across the world are actually now suffering from obesity. Mm -hmm. um, it's to a point now where we need to be considering that this is actually truly a disease rather than necessarily a choice or something which is a failing of an owner. It's actually far more okay. complicated than that. Yeah. Um, and in fact, ISFM, like many vet organizations, has endorsed um, a statement which, which accepts that obesity mm -hmm. is a disease. The reason we believe it's a disease is because um, it leads to many um, consequences on mm -hmm. the health um, and the well-being of the pet. Um, so there are numerous conditions that uh, can come along as a result of a cat developing obesity. Um, diabetes, uh, mm -hmm. arthritis probably being the top two, but a whole range of other illnesses. Um, there's also effects on quality of life that we know as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting um, that you mentioned the diabetes because uh, we've we've shared a cat between our, our two clinics, mm -hmm. um, one that obviously went through um, your obesity management program and lost a significant amount of weight. And then uh, he had obviously been diabetic at the time. And then when he first joined um, my clinic, the first time we saw him, he was actually in, in remission with his diabetes, which, which was fantastic. Is that something you, you find, do you get many cats referred for obesity related? related diabetes to your clinic or yeah so i mean as, as people know at the university of liverpool we have a specialist weight clinic mm -hmm. um, which we've been running for now just over 15 years wow. um, so we've seen a whole lot of cats in that time mm -hmm. many of them do have other illnesses and although mm -hmm. diabetes actually is one of the top conditions that goes alongside obesity in cats mm -hmm. actually we don't see that many referred for this okay. um, I don't think that means we're doing anything magical or it's it's mm -hmm. uncommon I think it reflects a mindset particularly of vets of wanting to prioritize in a cat what the main medical problem is mm -hmm. and of course clearly a diabetes is something in need of treating yeah. um, but in cats actually um, they get a kind of type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. 
a bit like people. Same with people, that, yeah. 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 So the weight actually does play a part. Mm -hmm. And we do recognize that successful weight loss, like in Buttons, that cat mm -hmm. that we shared, successful weight loss can actually um, put a cat into remission or reduce mm. requirements for, for insulin. Yeah, no, that's, um, yeah. He, did, he did end up coming out of remission, but mm -hmm. he hasn't regained the weight, which is good. And mm -hmm. I think his, um, his insulin needs, from what I can recall, are a lot lower than what yeah. they used to be. So, yeah. yeah so so i think that's one of the examples there but one of the mm. of course if you can prevent obesity from developing which would yeah. be my goal yeah. in, and, in and how, how do you do that i think that's, that's probably <laughs> the most important thing for us yeah. to consider I mean, isn't it i mean yeah it's a challenge we can maybe talk about some yeah. of the steps uh, mm -hmm. later on um but that's actually yeah. a lifelong thing so you need to start mm -hmm. at, at the kitten stage right from kittens yeah so, so what are the sort of main main things that do lead to to do to um obesity occurring mm -hmm. in cats what are yeah. what are sort of the main factors yeah so basically um essentially weight gain and mm -hmm. weight loss um, okay. is all to do with energy balance. Right. Um, very few people would ever question it's to do with energy balance. Um, mm -hmm. So cats gain weight like people do if right. intake exceeds use over a period of time. Right. So um, it's all, all about the yeah. food, I guess. All about, it's, well, it's yeah. all about oh. energy balance. Now, that yeah. sounds very simple, um, yeah. but the reality is there's lots of things that drive that right um, yeah so yes food intake and activity are going to be mm -hmm. the main drivers but there's yeah. even a lot behind that um, mm -hmm. in people we now recognize that somebody's risk of obesity um, mm -hmm. somewhere between 40 and 70 percent is determined by the genes that they have wow gosh and again, <laughs> it's so quite scary it, isn't yeah. it <laughs> and, and, and the, one of the points about that is that there's a lot of blame attached to mm. you know people have obesity and, and pets have obesity uh, yeah. the assumption is oh it's a failing it's a personal choice mm -hmm. but if 40 to 70 percent of someone's risk is your genes you can't really do a great deal no. about that no um, there's there's a certain amount that diet and that obviously mm -hmm. in people exercise is talked about a lot um it's obviously mm -hmm. slightly harder to manage in cats um probably sure. a little bit easier yeah. with your dog sure. patients yeah. but a little bit harder in cats yeah but, so i yeah. mean we, we we don't yet know the genetic factors in right. cats there's lots discovered in people there's mm -hmm. some discovered in dogs but people are working on that but right. certainly some of the sort of studies do suggest that genetics there are certainly mm -hmm. it, it does go in in in, in genetic lines Right. Now, of course, genes aren't the only thing, um, yeah. and and the, the rapid increase in prevalence of obesity can't be because of changes okay. in genes. It, uh, you know, gene genetics yeah. doesn't work that quickly. Um, so that's right. where the environment comes in. Of course, um, and and I mean, in the fancy scientific world, you start talking about epigenetics, don't you? But that's all about the environment and the impact yeah, the environment absolutely. has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and there's a whole range of things there that impact it. Mm. It'll be the life of the the owner mm -hmm. and that individual pet yeah. and that then dictates activity cats as we know mm -hmm. tend to do their own thing and so some of them will be more naturally active right or willing to go up than others um but it's it's that's a tricky bit actually sometimes for for an owner to to influence yeah. i suppose the only thing would be that the cats that are kept indoors all the time whether there's an impact there some studies suggest maybe some some others not yeah and it's even cats that have outdoor access not all of them access the outdoors in the same yeah, way absolutely. and we're yeah. definitely seeing in the work that i'm doing uh, even cats with free access to the outside sometimes don't spend that much time outside so they're not necessarily doing a lot of exercise in that way either um so how, if, if you sort of are worried your cat's obese as a, as a cat owner um how can you tell <laughs> what what sort of things can owners do to try and work out if their cat's got a problem <laughs> yeah. well one of the things I, I guess the the best way to do it actually would be to take your your cat to your vet um mm -hmm. you can do this at an annual health check if they're having vaccinations, yeah, vaccinations. And, and, and a vaccine check um and they'll do a, a, a an examination called a body condition score yeah. which is kind of a, the sort of cat equivalent of a body mass index um, so it's, it uses visual, a visual assessment and also touch mm -hmm. um, to, to determine the overall shape of the cat, which can tell us uh, on a scale of one to nine, whether they're underweight, ideal weight yeah. or overweight. Um, so that's probably the best way. Uh -huh. um, if you want a sort of simple guide, mm -hmm. um, if you can, if you gently run your fingers um, and your hands down the side of a cat's body particularly over yep. the area of the rib cage over the chest um whilst they're standing if possible so mm -hmm. you can do that when you may be making a fuss of them yeah. you should be able to feel 
little bumps indentations of the ribs without right. applying so sort of too much pressure <laughs> rub yeah. along yeah yeah so a little bit of pressure you should be able to feel them if you're yeah. having to push in it indicates they're a little bit heavier um right. than they should be perhaps they should be. So, okay. yeah so that's probably a, one, one of yeah. the guides um maybe when we talk a little bit later about prevention we'll talk about mm -hmm. weighing um because right. for me for, for cats you know cats are quite fluffy they're often they, they don't sit and stand like dogs do to yeah. allow you to do that so and they're, they're harder to me, see aren't yeah, they yeah, yeah exactly and, yeah. And, and weighing is a great way regular weighing is a great way yeah. of looking at change in weight which and especially uh, comes into prevention for the individual cat the weight is obviously most accurate to follow isn't it whereas if yeah, you're comparing you, you across cats, tiny changes yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i think that's one of the things yeah yeah no no that's really useful and then if, if a cat is sort of diagnosed with obesity by their vet mm -hmm. um I imagine owners are then are then sort of put on a, a treatment regime as it were and um, so what's sort of the approach that you take when when you've got an obese cat presented to you sure yeah so so when we're talking about cats that have obesity they tend mm -hmm. to on that a scale of one to nine they tend to be sort of eight or nine out of nine mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at at least 30 percent above their ideal weight yeah. now at that kind of um, uh, level the best thing would be to work with your vet and get them mm -hmm. to devise a weight management plan mm -hmm. um, now that involves various things in, in trying to increase activity with playing is one part of it yeah. but the fundamental bit is what we call a therapeutic weight loss diet right so that's a diet which has been designed to help a cat lose weight okay so is it um, sort of the human equivalent of some of these more regimented diet regimes where where you're very much calorie counting or is it a little bit looser we, than we, that we, we guess we mentioned earlier that weight gain occurs from energy imbalance so mm -hmm. yes successful weight loss comes by reducing calories right so the diets are designed to have fewer calories or, or, mm -hmm. or less energy overall yeah. in them than a standard diet but the critical thing of course is that in feeding your pet you need to ensure they get all the goodness all the vitamins yeah. and minerals and amino acids so these diets actually have more of the goodness relative to calories right that means when you're feeding less energy than they need so uh -huh. they lose weight they're still getting enough of everything else right so they're getting all the extra vitamins and yeah. minerals yeah. at the correct level Abs that they yeah. need. So, so that's why so, it's important yeah. that you do use one of those diets right. rather than just a standard diet which isn't yeah. designed in that way of course if you feed those less they're going to potentially become imbalanced yeah. in other things yeah. right so the, it's not yeah. just a matter of having the amount of food no, you've really no. got to be yeah sure. a lot more. Um, one of the other things of course is if you're feeding less calories a cat's mm -hmm. going to feel hungrier and yeah. they can, that can be a and challenge. And they can be a pest, can't they? Sure. <laughs> yeah. So part of the solution, those therapeutic diets often have characteristics that help mm -hmm. a cat feel fuller. So often okay. have a little bit more fibre in them, right. which tends to, to make them feel a bit fuller. And whilst it's not going to stop them from uh, uh, feeling hungry and, and, and yeah. often letting their owner know about that, mm -hmm. um, it will help to offset that. Yeah. And do you have any sort of special tips for, um, I mean, it, this is something my mum complains about a lot. Their cat's been on a diet, well, as long as I've known you, um, <laughs> so four <laughs> plus years, uh, and it's, it's slowly happening, but he does like to harass her at certain times of the day, and he will sometimes use some claws around her ankles, <laughs> and yeah. she's of the age now where her skin's a bit thinner, so we do worry about okay. this. Do you have any sort of tips that I can pass on, not that she listens yeah. to me, but I can mm -hmm. try? <laughs> so uh, I guess as well for, for those overweight cats as using the diet, they and yeah. it's, it's not just what you feed, but it's how you feed it. Mm -hmm. um, so spacing food out into smaller meals through the day is better. Yeah. Um, some, some cats that never become overweight will do that naturally. They'll graze. Right. They'll just we find snackers. the cats that are overweight tend to binge a bit more. Um, mm -hmm. So what an owner will have to do is, is either give small meals through the day or the best thing for me is, is actually to make a cat work for the food. Right. Um, there are these uh, various what we call puzzle feeders now, which are often hollow toys mm -hmm. where you can put a few, uh, a little bit of the food. Often if it's the kibbles, you can put kibbles yeah. in them um, and you can either hide them around the house or put them somewhere. And so a cat actually has both to find them, but also then to, to actually get to, the food out. To work um, a little bit more for yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. So you know, they'll be using energy there as well. But yeah. it also means that the food essentially separate from the owner so the owner's not actually providing the food yeah. um, there's a different 
food source and that can sometimes offset uh, Help what, things, uh, what yeah. Yeah. And definitely back in his prime he used to be quite a hunter so <laughs> we might see if right. we can replicate some of this around the house for him <laughs> well, uh, yeah and that's one of the things actually it's a, it's a good thing from an environmental enrichment point of view so I, i'd almost yeah. even say that for me would be a preferred way if you can for if a cat can, yeah. even if they're at ideal weight because mm -hmm. it kind of mimics a little bit of that hunting behavior which is yeah. part of their natural Activity. And I imagine, especially with indoor cats that don't have the opportunity to go out and, and express some of those behaviours as much as, <laughs> as cats that, that do have outdoor activity, it's probably a good thing with them as absolutely. well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you're sort of saying this is the kind of diet regime you'd be looking at sort of these higher body condition scores, mm -hmm. the sort of the eight and the nine, sure. so the clinically mm -hmm. obese. How about mm -hmm. the, the chubbier cat? <laughs> so okay, say a, a yeah. body condition score of seven, where, yeah. you know, us as vets are a bit like, yeah, they're at the stage where we need to yeah. probably do something, but they're not quite there maybe for the, sure. the, the more, more interventional diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that sort of cat, what we call seven out of nine, mm -hmm. would be up to about 20% above their ideal. So yeah. if, if you imagine a cat, and, and just let's do some easy sums, if it was mm -hmm. meant to be five kilos, yeah. perfect weight it would be about six kilos so about a kilo yeah, about a kilogram kilo weight. Um, yeah. now we've done a study recently that, um, mm -hmm. that suggests that actually using um, one of the lighter kind of diets okay um, so, yeah. so it's, it's that these aren't weight loss diets but they're not standard diets either they're mm -hmm. slightly lower in energy so these are sort of ones that you can see in, yeah. pet, sh in pet shops and things that um, are there, there are certain, light yeah i mean or, again i'm not going to yeah. mention it but no, we, we worked with a particular brand <laughs> yeah. for that that particular particular study but what those those diets have slightly less energy again right they're not quite like a weight loss diet but you can actually by restricting to about 80% mm -hmm. of what the, of the weight of, of the food that the, uh, the cat should have at the weight it should be. So uh -huh. again, if we, if we're talking about a six kilo cat, that should be five kilo cat, yeah. a five kilo cat is 80% of what a five kilo cat would eat. Right. You can restrict to that level, still meet all the nutrient needs oh, good. Yeah, and so get safe. some weight loss. Yeah. yeah. It's not as good as going for one of the therapeutic weight loss diets mm -hmm. because it, they don't quite have the, those other characteristics to make the cat feel as full. Okay, yeah. So they might it, be a little yeah. bit more upset perhaps sure. with, the, with the diet yeah. that they're receiving yeah. and the volume mm -hmm. they're receiving. And okay. It, and it, yeah, and it wouldn't be a long-term yeah. solution. So if you've right. tried it, for example, and after two months, maybe they'd lost a bit of weight or... Mm -hmm but not as, as expected and or yeah. if you found that the cat was having trouble by, by bothering mm -hmm. them, then I think that would be where you'd say even for those cats, go, go for the sort yeah. of approach that the vet right. uh, supervised. Yeah. I guess um, that's kind of an important thing to consider. Um, my work's obviously mainly with middle-aged cats and that's often when they're just starting to creep out of where uh, yeah. they should mm -hmm. be. And so I guess it's probably useful um, for pet owners and for us as vets to sort of recognise when that trend is happening and potentially try a tactic like that to nip it in the bud rather than yeah. <laughs> letting it progress into, into I, yeah, obesity. I, 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 <laughs> To be honest, yeah, and again, we know for, for our from our studies, it's easier mm -hmm. to achieve successful weight loss if it's ten to twenty percent of weight you have to lose, right. rather mm -hmm. than if it's thirty, forty, fifty percent. Yeah, um, I imagine some to, cases yeah. that are huge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't mean to say that a cat that ha that is forty percent above its ideal weight, a small mm -hmm. amount of weight loss actually will do it some good. So we, yeah. would, we would still try, mm -hmm. but actually spotting weight gain earlier, yeah, um, and actually intervening sooner the job is much is much easier, it's much easier um, yeah and that comes back to some of the rules we're going to talk about in terms yeah. of prevention prevention yeah and I, I guess that's probably the useful thing about the discussion that we're having today is it's really just starting to raise awareness with people isn't it so mm -hmm. they're thinking about it before it becomes a fact absolutely <laughs> getting in there <laughs> yeah so we sort of alluded to it that we did want to talk mm -hmm. a bit about prevention um and mm -hmm. obviously probably the best place to start would be with kittens <laughs> um, yeah. and, and what we can feed or ways that we can mm -hmm. feed, I guess, during, mm -hmm. during kittenhood to try and prevent obesity yeah. would be good. Yeah, so, so for me, prevention should start very young. And, mm -hmm. and this is like the first time you, you, you get your cat. So, so even before your first vaccinations, we have mm -hmm. studies that show um, that the cats that gain weight quickly during mm -hmm. growth are then at risk of, de of developing and having obesity okay. for the rest of their life. Right. Um, and that mirrors people as well. Sadly, yeah. children, by, even by eight months of age, heavier children at that age are a, a greater risk of developing right. obesity. That's really so that's why I, I would emphasize, you know, kitten is the time to, to start. Yeah. Um, 
Now, something we, we, we hopefully have available um, in the near future for the vet profession will be some growth charts, which work a bit Ooh. like kiddie growth charts. Okay, um, so you've got upper and lower yeah. percentiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So there, there are basically various curves on those right. charts. And I, the aim is that a, a kitten should roughly follow the lines on the chart wherever they are they can be yeah. heavier or they can be lighter but they follow those and you'd know right. them by regularly weighing them mm -hmm. through that growth phase if they're growing way too quickly then you know you need to be adjusting a little bit right uh, yeah through. and then potentially yeah. Yeah. do you, is it to, to sort of 12 months or 18 months that these growth uh, they, they go are to between to? that period actually they go beyond yeah. up to about 18 right. months okay yeah. right. it's in that to time sort of, yeah, yeah. That, and so you can uh, you think it's wise then if, if they're starting to be on the steeper part of the curve to try and bring them back yeah. into mm -hmm. right yeah th there's not a correct line there the, yeah. you know there's a yeah. line at the top a line at the bottom yeah. the main aim is they should follow the follow, lines right not the crossing line if they're crossing lines upwards okay. then you know they're growing they're growing too quickly right. um, oh, that's really interesting now, by doing that at the end of the growth phase mm -hmm. you should then know an adult cat that's at a perfect weight um, and you record right. that weight write it down yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I know for 18 example, months weight to bear this. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, whatever. Yep. It's five, you know, five kilos, four kilos, whatever it is. That's yep. my cat's weight now. Right. But it should maintain for life. Yeah. Um, Which and... brings me on nicely to my <laughs> issue with my cat because the cat that I've adopted during the coronavirus lockdown period, which was my okay. foster cat. Uh, so when I first got him, yeah, <laughs> I am now a failed foster. It's all over. Um, so <laughs> when I when I first received him on the, the week before lockdown, he was still entire at 12 months of age. So he was neutered quite promptly. Um, and mm -hmm. he was very much ideal body condition score at, at that stage. Uh, there's, now, there's now some bits <laughs> that are, um, <laughs> those ribs are no longer as easy to feel. Yeah. There's something happening in that tummy area that, that is swinging mm -hmm. slightly. Um, so what's, what's best from that sort of 18, 18 yeah. months age point to, to try and Stop yeah what's so, happening in my house at the moment <laughs> so, so prevention i say starts in kittenhood and it should actually continue through life mm -hmm. and for me it, it the key metric is how much your cat weighs yeah um so right. again if you've recorded the perfect weight in, in yeah. your situation your your cat may be a little bit heavier than than mm -hmm. ideal and, yeah. and we'd need to bring it back down, back down. as we were talking yep. about earlier <laughs> yeah. but once you, you 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 settle on a weight which is right mm -hmm. it regular weighing um yeah I would say at least twice a year. Yeah. But if you can do it more regularly, every three yeah. months or even every month, that would mm -hmm. be perfect. Yeah. And I mean, definitely a lot of vet clinics now are running nurse clinics, aren't they? Absolutely. Where they're yeah. happy to see cats or dogs in every sure. three to six months yeah. for a weight check. And they, they often don't yeah. charge for that, which is no, great. which is really now, good. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of owners, of course, are reluctant to take their cats to the vets. It's sometimes so not the easiest. Is, <laughs> yeah. Weighing is, is something you can do quite easily with a cat in the home environment. Mm -hmm. Um, you either pick your cat up, get on the bathroom scales, yeah. and, and you can then subtract your own weight from uh, the, the weight of both of you and you get your cat's weight. Mm -hmm. Or if you have one of those little luggage weighers, right. pop in the cat basket and you can actually weigh oh, the yep. basket and the cat and take off the weight. Right. Of the so using the cat like the suitcase almost. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that's an easy way of, of, of doing it without right. the need to go to the vets. And if, yeah. again, you get into habit of that, do, doing that every couple of months, mm -hmm. um, then you know... You'll start to see those little trends, yeah. won't you, yeah. when they're, they're creeping up. Yeah. So, yeah. So if yeah. you go back to that fight, I always use five kilos because the maths is easy. Yeah. But if you have a five kilo cat and they're five kilos, five kilos, and they go up to about 5.2 kilos... Mm -hmm. That's five. That's a five percent gain almost, right, and so yeah. that's the time. That's, yeah, you're saying okay, now I just need to adjust my food. And if you're recording yeah. how much food you're giving regularly, it's then simple adjustments, and that's yeah. the time to be doing it to prevent it, rather than when they're six kilos, seven kilos, eight yeah. kilos. Yeah, yeah, and I think. The, the five percent that you've just raised is a really good point. Um, mm -hmm. Just doing some of the analysis, the work I've been doing recently, five yeah. percent. 75% of the cats in my study are staying within that 5% fluctuation. Okay, yeah. So there seems mm. to be a, a little bit of normal fluctuation mm. within their weight. But sure. yeah, more than for, that, you definitely start to get worried. For me, 5% is good. I mean, there are studies, um, actually in dogs, sorry, rather than cats, <laughs> suggesting that like 6% weight loss actually benefits health. Right. So I take it that 6% yeah. weight gain means that a cat's means maybe not quite as healthier yeah. I'm kind of yeah. extrapolating a bit there but that's why i think little changes um and adjustments is the way is the way for me you, long yeah. term to help um in terms of prevention yeah and i imagine for the, the kind of work that you do um you've probably got some quite 
quite good horror stories as it were or, or some very difficult cases um, and I imagine yeah. some of those difficult cases are when you're trying to to get 40 50 60 percent weight losses achieved. yeah yeah, and, I, imagine yeah I, I think that there are definitely lots yeah. of challenging cases there yeah. um I think again I come back to the fact that even in those cases if you can get a bit of weight loss you know yeah. if the cat that's 40 percent of ideal weight will be healthier if it's lost five percent of its weight ten percent of its weight yeah. so for me that's still a win even mm. if going the whole way is a challenge um yeah. we deal with a lot of cats we talked about other illnesses uh -huh. um, we deal with a lot of older cats that have early kidney disease right um, and also yeah. are, are overweight and then you've got some challenges because as people know yeah. with kidney failure they tend to lose weight and so yeah. you've got to get the right balance of course but and if, um, we haven't really yeah. talked about the difference between no. fat tissue and muscle tissue but sure. there's a whole lot yeah. of really so it's a question of, again, a small tweaking, amount of weight yeah. early on is is what we would achieve to make yeah. them feel healthier but we probably would but even say well let's let's compromise there and not go the full way full way yeah. yeah and i mean even something like arthritis um mm -hmm. obviously just get a little bit of weight off those joints mm -hmm. is going to help Absolutely, make the cat yeah. a lot more happier and and, and yeah. potentially and a lot more mobile cat, yeah. Yeah. yeah so you've got the older yeah. cat that's got arthritis it's overweight it's got kidney disease yeah. a little bit of weight loss is good for its quality of life because of the mobility yeah too much weight loss obviously wouldn't then be you know be counterproductive so it's again, yeah, yeah, I, yeah i guess what we try and do is drive that right balance yeah and, and try and keep them as happy and as healthy for as long as we can absolutely <laughs> brilliant go cool. did you have any sort of final final things that you you wanted to make people aware of or otherwise we yeah. can we can finish up the session i'll, I'll just end with <laughs> with one very quick uh suggestion we, we, yep. we talked a little bit earlier about the sort of hungry cats that bother mm -hmm. their, their cats yeah, yeah. one thing i learned actually from from another vet was mm -hmm. um if your cat's bothering if your food and you say it's on a diet um rather than giving them food um get the brush out and groom them yeah uh which is an yeah. interesting thing now there there'll be two types of cat mm -hmm. so one cat that loves grooming will get a reward which is not necessarily the reward they were expecting <laughs> yeah. but they'll still but enjoy it'll it. still be a little endorphin yeah. won't it they'll be happy yeah yeah whereas if you have a cat that hates grooming mm -hmm. um they're not going to be bothering you for food for a while <laughs> no, they're probably going to go take a little walk and go yeah. and do something else yeah. for a while yeah no, that's so, really so that's good one tip. little yeah. thing which is yeah. and, but it, in, in the serious thing there is it's a we're trying to give them a positive reward yeah. people tend to like to use food as a reward and things like that and actually posit there are yeah. other positive rewards we can use no, I have to say, during lockdown, I've mm -hmm. been using um, the feather on a stick um, as, <laughs> as one form of distraction as yeah. well. Yeah, <laughs> not being the easiest when you've also been trying to sit at your desk and write to suddenly have to play yeah. with a feather. But yeah, <laughs> definitely useful uh, to, to clear the, uh, the, the um, keyboard for a bit anyway. Perfect. <laughs> cool. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time, Alex. That's all right. It was brilliant. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. In the recording. <laughs> cool. All right.